What is going on, everybody? My name is John Hammond, and welcome back to another video on Boot to Root CTF 2019 edition. This challenge is called Easy PHP. It is the first challenge in the web category, and we're given a link here which we can go take a look at. It gives us some PHP in a highlighted file that we can actually examine and try to understand in reverse. It looks like we have some get variables that we can go ahead and pass to it. It's including the flag in a regular PHP file that we wouldn't normally be able to access. It will not actually return any information for us, but it is creating that variable. So we've got get variables we can pass to it, and it looks like it's going to run through some tests on each of those. We have kind of like Olympic-style PHP magic tricks to run through. So the first one is actually determining whether or not we can get a string matching its MD5 hash of the string. Um, this is the case of PHP type juggling, where you'll see often PHP magic hashes, and these are also referenced in CTF Katana, my document, um, where you've got anything that's 0e, or a hash that starts with 0e, and then followed by all numbers, that is going to be treated by PHP as a number. It's actually going to be considered 0. So if we can also find a string that is equal to this, but it's not using PHP strict comparison. It doesn't have three equal signs, it only has two. So that allows us to try and determine a string that is also considered zero, so it also starts with zero e, and that will match even if the actual contents of the string does not match, thanks to PHP's uh, issue there. So uh, that is going to take a little bit of some time to crank out. Uh, normally when you take a look at magic hashes, you have a few that you can actually work with already. There are stuff that I have recommended in CTF Katana, and I totally typed the wrong link there, so let's go back to github.com and that's just John Hammond in CTF hyphen Katana. You have magic hashes down here in PHP and you have some options that are in that form 0e and then all numbers following it. However, none of these on the actual plain text side start with 0e so we will have to generate that ourselves. Uh, we can do that just with Python. It takes a little bit of time but it is possible so let's go ahead and create a script to do that for us. We get a shebang line and I'm going to, from MD5, import MD5. And what I'm going to do is actually create a while loop, because I want to do this over and over again. We're going to want to keep track of a number. I'll just call it I. So while true, we'll keep cranking on this. What we'll do is we'll say, OK, the original plain text is going to equal 0e, because it's going to be preceded by that 0e, right? And then be the number that we're working with. So I'll just format that in with I. And then the actual hash is going to be the rendition that passed to MD5. We have to create a new MD5 object each time because it's going to be updating values in it. So let's just do m.update plain text, and the hash will equal m.hex digest. So we can test if h starts with. 0e, then we know, okay, we have a candidate that might actually be later with digits, so we'll cut it up. We'll say if h to forward, so removing the 0e and taking considering everything after that, if that is a digit, then we have a match. So what we can do is we can print out our plain text, and we can print out the actual hash that we're working with. Then we'll break, because we don't want to loop anymore. At the very, very end, remember we have to keep iterating our number because we're just going to go in until infinity. If you want to see this working, what we can do is we can just print out the number that we're working with, actually just use plain text, and the hash, and we'll see if we're cranking through it. So Python ape to get it to run, and you can see we are running. So I'm going to let this go for a little bit of time. I'm not going to print this out because it slows it down. Uh, this takes a few minutes, so I will pause the recording and get back to you once we have a hit. Okay, now the script has returned. We've got 0e21596201 and the hash that corresponded with it, and that matches our criteria. So what we can do now is actually use that as our original foothold for step one, for part one. So let's actually take note of that. Let's just say, um, actually in our ape.py, we may as well take note that we found it to be value that. So now we can work with the actual web page. What we can do is we can go ahead and say curl, get that web page. This looks like a lot of nonsense because it is the like PHP highlight file function, but now we can specify our one variable and that can equal what we had as our hash. We can go ahead and copy that and paste it right there. Now we can see the first part of the flag. We have boot to root, whatever, and we'll move on to the next portion of this code that we have to work through. So 
now we have one that also needs to, that we need to make sure ha is going to exist in our in our future parts but we've also got string two and string three to work with we test if both of these exist if they've they both been set and we want to make sure they are not the same so we are using strict comparison here string two should not be equal to string three but we can determine if the hash md5 hash with a specific salt is equal to that hash with the specific salt of the other one. So that, again, is a loose comparison, not using PHP, strict comparison, so we can do some type juggling here. In this case, there is a common trick with PHP where you don't just supply a string, but you actually convert that argument into an array. Because when you bring that through hash with the salt, you're actually going to have that be evaluated as zero. So that salt stays the same and that's going to equal the next thing however this string two string three will actually still be evaluated as that value that it needs to be so that's kind of clever an interesting trick you can see a lot of write-ups for other ctf challenges that abuse that in other locations on the internet but let's actually go ahead and work with that we'll say curl with our one value still being there we also want to have our two we can set that equal to something, but we can supply these two square braces following it. So that notes that, okay, that's an array. And we'll make that value to be one or something. And then we'll have three as our other variable. We'll actually set that again as an array. And we'll set that to equal something other than what we set two at two. Does that make sense? So now three is going to equal two, as long as it's something other than what that other variable is. So when we run this, we have to actually go ahead and escape it inside of curl. So we can, if you wanted to use like some URL encoding, you can do that. However, curl will let you just supply backticks here and then it won't consider it the wrong way. So now we've got boot to root whatever it takes assuming in lead speak, and we can move on. So that one is cool and kind of neat, but it's, it wasn't too difficult, at least didn't take as much time to process out as the other one. The next rendition, the next part here, the final part, looks to be PHP serialization vulnerabilities, right? It's trying to unserialize input that we can control, so that's a bug. You can see a lot of write-ups on this if you Google it, a lot of techniques that talk about it. However, normally it's talking about a class that's defined with a PHP magic function, like understore underscore or a destruct or something that will actually run automatically because we want that code to end up being used in the actual object. In this case, what it does is it actually has a temp variable and a flag variable, and this get magic quotes GPC thing, that just checks a setting in PHP as to whether or not it needs to properly evaluate this with, with slashes in there. So we don't, for our, our payload and our exploit mentality, we don't really have to worry about that. We know that's going to unserialize our input, though, because it's just straight up our get argument that we pass to it. So if we have that object, what we're going to do is we're going to set that object's flag to the flag, like what we would expect from our flag.php file that's included. And we'll test if that flag is equal to, with strict comparison this time, the results temp variable. So that's kind of an interesting trick, because we can serialize this object, we can fake that object, and we can control some variables here, but how are we going to get it to look ahead as to what the temp variable actually is? We, there's no way for us to know that. I tried some interesting stupid things with like eval, or trying to see if we can determine what is this value going to be, but the real actual, like, pathway here is to pass by reference and use it by reference. So we're actually going to end up creating our own PHP script that will create this object, serialize the data for it, and, and then we'll just pass that data to it. So let's do that. Let's subl like test.php and that's going to start with a PHP notion here and we'll create a class secrets just as it has in the code. In fact, we can probably just even copy and paste that. And just to be sanitary, I guess we'll go ahead and close this PHP tags here. And then what we can do is we can create a object to hold that class. So we'll say new secrets in PHP. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to set that temp variable to equal what the flag is. Because remember, that has to, the code has to ensure that those are equal to each other. So we'll set temp equal to what flag is. And we'll do that by reference here. We'll say sec and then PHP uses the arrow notation rather than the dot to actually uh, like access an object's properties. So we'll say sec temp is equal to the reference of sec flag. Great. So now what we want to do is we actually want to display out, so I'll use echo here, the value when we serialize this object. So serialize and we'll pass in our sec object. So now we can check this out. 
what we can do is we can just run PHP 7.0, because that's the one I have installed in my case. We'll give it the argument as the file that we just created, and it will create this for us. So secrets is an object, serialize. It has some, some variables. It has a string temp, it has a string flag, and it's actually using this R mode here to specify, okay, that is actually the uh, notion that we, that we want to work, work with. Um, props to, uh, I want to check out who it was in the Discord server. Props to, it was props to DCA and the real lulls in the Discord server for kind of helping me understand that and get an idea as to why that was working the way that it was working. So we have that serialized object now, and if we wanted to, we could go ahead and pass that in to our curl command. That will now be number four. However, this will not work off the bat. You can see we've got some quotation marks that are getting in the way, especially with our curl object. So what we can do is go ahead and actually URL encode that. I'm going to fire that up in Python. So let's just get idle on um, the super, super easy way. Let's just URL lib quote and then pass that in. So that gives us a lot of URL encoding, like percent encoding, but that works just fine for us. We can just spit it into curl and it'll, it'll handle it. So remove everything that we had previously where we set four is equal to, spit that all in, and now we've got the full flag. Boot to root, whatever it takes, because I love the adrenaline in my veins. Super long part, so you wouldn't be able to guess that. So that's that. That is the flag. We can go ahead and submit it here, and that would be however many points it was at that time, but that is that challenge. Some interesting hurdles to jump through with PHP. Again, a lot of PHP juggling, magic hashes that you can abuse. You know theoretically there's going to be something that exists that matches that criteria. Um, abusing assault, even when you can just say, okay, my string isn't really a string, it's also an array. Goes through some of those PHP checks and some PHP object serialization, object injection. There's a lot of documentation on it. So. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you guys learned something. If you did, please do like the video, like, comment, and subscribe. I'd love to see you on the, dis on the Discord server. There's a link in the description. Patreon, PayPal, the whole nine arts. You guys know it. I'm screwing up words again. I'm going to end the video real quick. Bye. See ya.